Behind me, we have the F-150's little brother, this cute 2025 Ford Maverick, and it is 100% the first gasoline-powered pickup truck to come with gasoline particulate filters here in North America. Today, we're gonna take a look at why Ford would do this, as well as what we can look forward to with gasoline emissions. Welcome back, I'm Alex. Last week we talked all about the 2027 diesel emission regulations and you guys seem to like that video. In that video, I did mention that some European countries require gasoline particulate filters on their gas engines. Gasoline particulate filters on them involves regens and all that fun stuff. So don't be sleeping on gas engines because sooner than later, I would imagine, they might also have filters on them. And well, Europe isn't the only place implementing these gasoline particulate filters. Here in North America, starting in 2025, we will have the first gasoline powered pickup truck with gasoline particulate filters, the 2025 Ford Maverick. I figured today we'd take a look at what exactly a gasoline particulate filter is or a GPF, talk about some pros, some cons, what they do, how they work, as well as how it could potentially affect the automotive industry moving forward. And I'm not gonna pretend I'm as knowledgeable about the gasoline emissions as I am with diesel, but when it was announced in August this year that the 2025 Ford Maverick would come with GPFs, it was a little bit surprising to see the lack of attention it got because this stuff generally does intrigue me. And well, here it is right from the horse's mouth. We've added a new gas particulate filter to meet emission requirements, and this reduces the maximum horsepower that we can deliver. Don McKenzie, manager of Ford Truck Communications. And this is really nothing new for Ford and other manufacturers who have been implementing gasoline particulate filters around the world in places like Europe and Australia for some years now. Last year, I made a little bit of a boo-boo saying that the Toyota Tundra 3.4 liter iForce engine was coming with gasoline particulate filters, which is completely untrue. Gasoline particulate filters. I could not believe that I read that. Not my finest moment, but one of the reasons why I butchered that is because the European version of the 3.4 liter iForce engine does indeed come with gasoline particulate filters. And a lot of countries in Europe starting in the late 2010s implemented that most gasoline vehicles need to come with gasoline particulate filters. Britain, for example, I believe started in 2016, but they call it petrol particulate filters because well, they're British. So what exactly is a gasoline particulate filter and why is Ford putting them on their two liter turbocharged engines in these Ford Mavericks? Well, the idea is quite simple as the name suggests. It uses a filtration medium and it eliminates soot hydrocarbons, essentially unburnt fuel, the black stuff from exiting the exhaust. Basically the same idea as what happened in 2007 with diesel particulate filters. So a normal older port injection style gasoline engine like my 6.4 Hemi here is actually somewhat clean when it comes to particulate matter. It releases about one milligram per kilometer. Now to put that into perspective, a modern diesel engine with a diesel particulate filter releases about five milligrams per kilometer. So these older port injection style engines are actually pretty clean when it comes to particulate matter. The problem lies with direct injection engines like this five liter Coyote V8 we have with us today. Direct injection has a number of benefits, better fuel economy, better throttle response, more power, but it comes with one downside. It produces a lot more soot or particulate matter. A direct injection engine produces anywhere from five to 15 milligrams per kilometer of particulate matter. That is five to 15 times more than a port injection gas engine. That is also two to three times more than a modern diesel engine. So it's no surprise that a lot of European countries are starting to implement gasoline particulate filters and why Ford would put it on the 2025 Ford Maverick. Now with the implementation of a GPF on an engine like this or the two liter turbo in the Ford Maverick, it'll bring the particulate matter well below one milligram per kilometer, which is a significant reduction and can reduce up to 99% of particulate matter depending on driving conditions, which again is a large improvement. Most critically, it will significantly reduce the amount of very fine particles that go deep into the human lungs and cause a plethora of health problems as well as environmental issues. Now, like a diesel particulate filter, these gasoline particulate filters, when they become full of soot, will need to run a regen cycle to essentially burn off or oxidize the soot and clean the filters. But from my understanding, the soot load out of these gas engines is significantly less than a diesel. Therefore, the frequency of regens should be much lower and a forced regen should be pretty rare, hopefully. 
And because the exhaust temps on a gas engine are naturally higher than a diesel, you can drive around and burn a lot of that soot off, also known as a, a passive regen. Essentially what happens is you come off the throttle, the engine will cut fuel, therefore allowing a lot more oxygen into the exhaust and that should help to oxidize or burn off the soot. A lot of sciencey stuff above my pay grade, but moral of the story is that these gasoline particulate filters should need to run much less regens, which is a good thing in my books. Regardless, even with lower frequency of regens, they are gonna have to happen from time to time with gasoline particulate filters. And if you're buying an engine or a vehicle with gasoline particulate filters, I would highly recommend you familiarize yourself with what a regen is because as a diesel mechanic, there are a number of issues that can arise with having particulate filters as well as the regen process. But as more and more manufacturers and engines go to the benefits of direct injection, like all the V8s in the 1500 segment, including this wonderful five liter Coyote V8, I would suspect in order to continue to meet emission regulations, they at some point will probably need to look at putting a gasoline particulate filter on them. And I have heard some rumors swirling about on the internet for whatever that's worth, that Ford is or has been testing the 3.5 EcoBoost with gasoline particulate filters for future emission regulations. So who knows? Moving on, I figured we'd talk about some disadvantages of having a gasoline particulate filter on your vehicle. And the first one and most worrisome in my opinion as someone that works with particulate filters on a very regular basis is reliability. Now, I totally understand that there will be less soot load through the filters, which should, in theory, give them a longer lifespan. But in my experience, it's not necessarily the filters themselves that fail. It's all the components, the wiring, the sensors, the software around the particulate filters that cause the biggest headaches. I mean, at a minimum, you're going to need a bunch of sensors, probably two temp sensors, two pressure sensors, one, maybe two particulate matter sensors, all of which are gonna need wiring to go to it, more software so the ECU can communicate or, or calculate those calculated values that the sensors are sending it. And when you're doing a regen, there needs to be more software to control engine performance and so on and so forth. It just creates a lot more complexity at the end of the day. And if it's anything like the diesel side where a check engine light or a mission related check engine light derates the engine, it just, it, it can create a lot of headaches for the customer. The second thing is cost. When or if a emission related component or a sensor fails, generally they are not that cheap. I mean, a gasoline particulate filter can cost up to $4,000 to replace. Additionally, from my own experience, sometimes it takes a while to diagnose what is going on with these emission components. You need specialized software and often the diagnostic procedures are lengthy and can be difficult to nail down which component or sensor has actually failed. Next is performance loss. Ford literally said that the two liter turbocharged engine in the Ford Maverick is losing 12 horsepower because of the gasoline particulate filters. Their words, not mine. And it does make some sense because essentially you're restricting the airflow of the engine. Secondly and additionally is fuel economy. I can almost guarantee that you're gonna have a five to 10% fuel economy loss with a vehicle with gasoline particulate filters on them. Another thing is that you're gonna have to run low sulfur gasoline and that could result in more costly fuel or having to actually run premium because well, from my understanding, sulfur in the fuel, it can't really be burned out of the GPFs. Therefore, it could result in premature clogging or failure of the gasoline particulate filter, which you don't really want. Next up is the type of oil. You're gonna need to run low saps oil, meaning um, sulfated ash, phosphorus, and sulfur. Phosphorus and sulfur um, really help to reduce wear. They're an anti-wear agent. Sulfated ash is a cleaning agent, helps to maintain clean oil, all of which will have to be limited because every engine burns some oil and these components cannot be burned out of the gasoline particular filter, which could result in premature clogging. But if I'm gonna be completely honest, the biggest worry for me is reliability. These small displacement turbocharged engines are finding their, their way into more and more vehicles. And at times, their reliability alone is questionable before we strap on a gasoline particulate filter, which just adds even more complexity, more failure points, and potentially more headaches. Now, what I also find interesting is the HD gas engine, something like my 6.4 Hemi or this 7.3 Godzilla, the fact that they are still port injection engines, therefore relatively clean when it comes to particulate matter. I would argue that it'd be beneficial to keep the 
port injection and not have to use gasoline particulate filters rather than potentially going with the benefits of direct injection but also having to use gasoline particulate filters. So it'll be interesting to see what happens or what manufacturers do with the HD gas or engines. Anyways, it has been fun going down this emission rabbit hole for the, the last couple weeks. Now, one thing we do remember is that manufacturers like Ford, they're just doing what they're told. And there are pros and cons to something like a gasoline particulate filter. We highlighted some, some health benefits as well as some downsides as some questionable reliability. But let me know what you guys think. Do you like the idea of gasoline particulate filters or is it something that you are not happy with. Next week, I'm gonna be in beautiful Ontario for the holidays with the old fam jam. And we'll be talking about the new Cummins dropping in 2025 because there have been some specs revealed. Spoiler alert, we are sticking with the good old 6.7 Cummins, baby, let's go. We'll talk more about that next week. If you did like this video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe because we'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.